Hey everyone, are you struggling to figure out which platform to host your online design portfolio on? There are so many places to host a website online nowadays, it's hard to keep track of which platform is the easiest to use, the most customizable, and the cheapest. In this video, I break down the top 8 portfolio websites for designers to host their portfolios on and give you my recommendation for the easiest and the simplest way to get your case studies up and running. Hey everyone, my name is Derek and welcome back to another episode of The Handoff. The Handoff provides tips and tricks to design bootcamp graduates and junior designers to help them land their first jobs in the industry. If you're interested in keeping up to date with the latest articles and videos we publish, smack that subscribe button below and check out our mailing list in the, in the description box below. So let's talk about design portfolios. For a lot of junior designers and bootcamp graduates, your experience and portfolio is the only thing that helps you stand out from the competition when you apply to jobs. With so many bootcamp graduates and self-taught designers today, it's important that you're able to show strong case studies and share your thought process in each one of your case studies. In your portfolio, you can share a bit about yourself so that any company, hiring manager, or recruiter will get a sense into your background, the field you're transitioning from, or any other information that will help you stand out as a design candidate. Note that I'm not sponsored by any of the portfolio websites that I mentioned in this video. This is just me sharing my open and candid thoughts about each one of the platforms I've come across. I'll be rating each one of the platforms in this video based on costs, customization, and simplicity. If you're interested in learning step-by-step -step how to build a customized portfolio without the price tag of some of the platforms I'm mentioning in this video, check out the link in the description box below. So with that, let's get into it. So one of the most popular platforms out there is WordPress. WordPress is a popular content management system that powers a lot of sites on the web today, big and small. The nice thing about WordPress is there is essentially a plugin for everything because it's been around for nearly two decades at this point. This means you can really make it your own and customize it the way you want to. However, the interface isn't really easy to modify and customize unless you have at least some basic knowledge of code. Their WYSIWYG editor can be pretty clunky and the backend interface can take some time getting used to as well. If you're going to use WordPress, it's likely that you have to choose one or more themes or plugins to power your website. Some plugins are more powerful and allow you the flexibility to build your site however you want. Divi, Elementor, Semplus, and WP Bakery are examples of some of these. The initial setup can be a bit of a headache, but once you get used to the platform, you'll be able to change and add new pages in no time. I'll give WordPress a 2 out of 5 in terms of ease of use, 4 out of 5 for customization unless you're using a very specific pre-made theme, in which case that can vary depending on which theme you're deciding to purchase, and I'll give it a 4 out of 5 for price. Again, this depends on which theme you decide to buy. Some themes are free while others are more expensive. You get what you paid for, but ultimately using WordPress you can build a pretty good portfolio without blowing the bank. So along the same lines, you have Squarespace. You probably see a lot of ads for Squarespace all the time on YouTube or other video platforms. Squarespace is actually a pretty good option to build your website on. It falls somewhere between a CMS and a website builder, but it's a pretty decent option to build your portfolio on. Like WordPress, Squarespace has pre-created templates and themes you can choose from. Most of these templates are curated and created by website designers. So you know that regardless of what you choose, you can spin something up that looks pretty good. However, the downside of Squarespace is its limited customization and its higher price point. For their simplest and cheapest package, they charge $12 a month, and that's built on an annual basis, which gives you most of what you need to get started. If you want to add upgrades such as integrations with third-party systems, access to Google's Gmail system, or more custom modifications through changes to the HTML or the CSS, you'll have to pay more. Overall, I would rate Squarespace a 3 out of 5 for ease of use, 3 out of 5 for customization, and a 2 out of 5 for price. Some of the other platforms I'll be talking about in this video will actually be cheaper if you set up your own hosting and buy your domain, domain name separately. The last content management system I'll talk about is Wix. Wix and Squarespace both fall between a traditional CMS and a typical website builder. As part of their basic plans, Wix and Squarespace offer a free domain name for the first year, which is actually a pretty okay deal. 
Depending on the domain name you choose, .com, .net, .org, .design, the prices can vary anywhere from free to more than around $100. Most domain names that are available will fall within the $10 to $25 range, but of course, if the domain name is already taken, you might have to place a bid or pay up to thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars for something that's already reserved. In recent years, Wix has really upped their game, releasing more advanced tools such as Corvid, which allows you to build web, web apps instead of websites that hook into databases. Um, and they've also given their whole UI and UX a complete refresh as well. So I fumbled around in Wix quite a bit, and they have a lot of pre-built blocks and templates that you can choose from. However, they do have a storage and bandwidth limit, which means that if you're anticipating a lot of people visiting your site or if you're uploading a lot of video or audio content, you might have to upgrade your account. Ultimately, as I tried to familiarize myself with Wix's platform, I was having trouble getting the hang of the website builder, even after a few hours of fumbling around. They have a lot of features, but the UX still needs a bit of work. Overall, I would rate Wix a two out of five for ease of use, a 3.5 out of 5 for customization, and a 2 out of 5 for price. So number 4, let's talk about Adobe Portfolio. Launched at the beginning of 2016, it's definitely grown quite a bit over the past few years, and I see a lot of designers hosting their portfolio on Adobe Portfolio. The nice thing about their platform is that the pricing is already tied to an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. That means if you're already paying for Photoshop, Illustrator, XD, or other apps in their ecosystem, you should already have Adobe Portfolio for free. Adobe Portfolio specifically focuses on portfolios, which includes work from a variety of fields, ranging from illustration, to photography, to architecture, to fashion. Like Squarespace, they have a collection of curated themes that you can select from, although the selection appears a little more limited than Squarespace. Aside from changing the colors, layout, typography, and navigation, there's limited ability to modify your portfolio and really make it your own. That means you run the risk of having a portfolio that might look similar to many others out there, which is not a huge deal if you have unique content and you focus on the content inside of your case studies. I would give Adobe a four out of five in terms of ease of use, two out of five for customization, and I'll also give it a four out of five for price. If you don't have access to the creative suite, or a subscription to other products in Adobe's ecosystem, you can pay $10 a month to access Adobe Portfolio, Photoshop, and Lightroom. So one of the newcomers to this space is UX Folio. Specifically created to address the lack of UX-focused portfolio platforms, UX Folio focuses on letting designers showcase more of their process and give more context around problem solving as opposed to just showing content visually. They highlight a lot of great case studies on their site and the platform allows for recruiters and hiring managers to focus more on the content instead of just your visuals. So this is a really good option for user researchers, UX writers, and UX designers, as well as those who aren't as heavily involved in the visual side of design. With that being said, it's still a really good option for product designers, UI designers, and those who do want to showcase their visual design skills. UX Folio offers two tiers. The basic tier is free and gives you up to one portfolio and one project. However, if you want anything more than that, you'll have to upgrade to the premium tier, which is $9 a month. That gives you access to multiple projects in a portfolio, which is essential to showcasing the breadth as well as the depth of skills you have as a designer. Some other things that are nice to note include password protection, Google Analytics, custom colors, typography, favicon, and the ability to remove the UX Folio branding from your site. UX Folio is definitely a really solid option compared to some of the other tools in the space, but it's definitely lacking in features for the price that you're paying. I would give it a four out of five in terms of ease of use, two out of five for customization, and also a three out of five for price. So for number six, I've grouped together Behance and Dribble because they are very similar and share a lot of similarities and features across the two different platforms. Behance and Dribbble are two platforms that focus on allowing designers to display their work visually. However, it's not a private platform because your designs will show up alongside work from other designers in the space. One thing to note is that Behance is now owned by Adobe, so if you want to create a portfolio, you should use Adobe Portfolio as opposed to hosting projects individually on Behance. 
Both of these platforms have been around for quite some time now, so they have a lot of features built out. It's a great way to share visual design work because the two sites are oriented around showing more of the, the visual design work that you're doing. Drupal has a weird system, however, where your work is private by default, unless you upgrade to Pro for $36 a year, or if someone who's already a player invites you to the platform as a player, which gives you the ability to publicly display your work. Behance, on the other hand now, is free, but it definitely feels more like Pinterest or one of the scrapbooking websites as opposed to an individual portfolio site. I find it important to mention that you shouldn't be using either of these platforms to showcase your portfolio work because on the different Facebook design groups I'm in, I see a lot of designers putting out their content on Behance and Dribbble and applying to jobs using these platforms. It's okay to drive traffic to your own site if you're linking out to your site in the description, but because the site is more of a repository of design inspiration and work than it is a portfolio platform, you don't want to send a recruiter or a company a link to Behance or Dribbble. Because of that nature, I won't be rating either of these platforms, but you can still check them out in the links in the description box below. So the last type of platform I'm going to be talking about is not really a platform, but rather a way for you to get your portfolio up and running. If you know a bit of code, a bit about web hosting, and how to get a website up and running, building your website from scratch is a really, really cool way to display your work. So there's a lot of different considerations here. First of all, I really don't rec recommend doing this unless you really enjoy the process and want to build your own portfolio from scratch. The process of designing and building and putting up your site is really time consuming. And once it's up, if you really want to update it, it can take much longer than some of the other platforms I mentioned earlier in this video. However, building your own site, if it's well built, can show employers, companies, and hiring managers that you know code, and can most likely communicate with developers better than other designers can. So ever since I built my portfolio out several years ago, I found it hard to maintain and keep up to date, but the ability for customization is really limitless and only bounded by your development skill. So building out your portfolio from scratch is ultimately really rewarding, but for most junior designers and entry-level designers, or even those coming out of a bootcamp, I would recommend using one of the platforms I mentioned earlier in this video. I would give building your portfolio from scratch a two out of five in terms of ease of use, five out of five for customization, and a five out of five for price. So in conclusion, we talked about eight different ways to get your portfolio up and running in this video. So regardless of which platform you choose, What's most important is the work that you showcase in your portfolio and your case studies, not the platform you host it on. If you're using a different platform to host your portfolio or want to share insights on what helped your portfolio stand out, comment below. I love to hear what you guys are using to show off your work. So if this video helped you out at all, drop a like down below, click that subscribe button for more tips and tricks on landing your first UI or UX job, and check out the mailing list in the description box below. I'll see you in the next video.